Hello, and welcome to another Lightning Ventures Syndicate Q&A with the founding team. I am here today, it is MLK Day, uh, around four o'clock, with Starbacker. All right, and we have Mr. Joe Dillon, we have uh, Nicholas, uh, we call him Edge, and we have Arun, uh, three of the most uh, different people uh, ever that are running this, and uh, and I hope that comes through here uh, with this Q and A. We got some good questions from our syndicate. We're going to cover what they're building, what they've built so far, and a little bit about them. So, how about we start with a little general intros, and how about we start with my man, that Joe I know, uh, Joe Dillon. Go ahead. Thanks, Mud. It's excited to be here, and thanks for uh, thanks for hosting us with Lightning Ventures for the Q and A. We're excited to uh, hear the feedback and uh, talk a little bit about Starbacker. Uh, my name is Joe. Uh, I've been in uh, the energy industry generally and the startup space for about the last fifteen or twenty years in a variety of different uh, verticals, um, and kind of fell down the rabbit hole about 18 months ago and ha and has led me into, um, you know, kind of living, breathing, eating Bitcoin all the time. And so part of that was we've developed, uh, that was kind of the genesis for developing Starbacker, which I'm sure we'll, you know, continue to talk about a little bit more there. But uh, yeah, I'm based in uh, sunny Florida in the United States and uh, have a have a, a lovely wife and a young daughter. So that's uh, the, the high points. All right, sounds good. Uh, moving diagonal, at least on my screen, uh, Arun, uh, he is always the life of the party. Um, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Thanks, thanks, um, Mas. Thanks, everyone, um, for uh, hosting us. Uh, I am Arun Ned. Um, uh, I've been uh, living in the U.S. for the past 20 years, um, focused primarily on the tech side, uh, I've been always, you know, tinkering and kind of like, you know, working with uh, connected hardware, uh, fell into the crypto uh, rabbit hole in 2017, um, you know, trying to always, you know, find a, a, a good use case or something that we can, we can get that to the uh, 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 to users or, or put it in a product. And that's how I uh, came into this whole uh, Lightning. I started working with Lightning uh, a, year and, uh, a year ago uh, and, you know, uh, linking the payments uh, into connected hardware and you know all the other things uh, uh, related to that. Uh, I live in uh, in Virginia, in the U.S. Um, uh, thanks uh, for uh, uh, hosting us. All right, sounds good. And uh, Arun built a great tabletop uh, lightning point of sale device that I actually used personally in El Salvador. Uh, when we were paying for an event. Uh, he doesn't have one with him, but it is a really, really cool product. All right, so we have Nicholas here. Uh, everyone calls him, oh, Joe has one. Uh, it's, blo <laughs> it's, it's blacked out. It's uh, that little it's device works wonderfully as a point of sale um, for lightning payments. Um, very cool. Uh, Nicholas, all right, so everyone calls him Edge because I guess nobody can pronounce his name. Uh, let's hear a little bit about where you're from and uh, what your role is with the Starbacker team. Thank you very much. Yeah, exactly. My name is Nicholas, but uh, everyone calls me Edge or Egge, how it's pronounced in, in, in Germany or in German. Um, yeah, I've been, I've been um, working in advertising for the last few years, um, doing, doing digital banners and advertising. Um, but I fell down the rabbit hole like in a really, really strong and deep dive a year ago and pretty much haven't done pretty, yeah, I've, I haven't done pretty much anything else in my free time than researching Bitcoin and, and um, doing doing fun stuff with Bitcoin. And I actually started um, being a co-host in, in one of uh, the German biggest Bitcoin podcasts called 21, which is uh, 21 in German. And um, started engaging a lot in Bitcoin, in German Bitcoin communities, and um, yeah, I'm 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 pretty much uh, yeah 100 stoked to work with Bitcoin, and um, 
Yeah, um, <laughs> I think I think having the the advertising background really really helped me, um, or at least the the tech part of the advertising background um, helped me grasp a lot of these concepts that Bitcoin uses and Bitcoin utilizes really quickly. Um, but I'm but I'm here to learn even more, and I'm um, so. All right, sounds good. All right, so we're doing the who, what, when, where, and why. All right, we did the who. Um, let's do the what. All right. What is Starbacker, right? Uh, in your own words, I don't know who wants to field this one, but let's start with the what, and then we'll go with when you started this and where the traction's at. So what is Starbacker as simply as possible? Yeah. Um, let me start this off, Mike, with it as kind of, uh, we put together like a little bit of a mission statement, couple sentences that as simple as possible describes what we're trying to do. Uh, we think it's a pretty ambitious goal. So, you know, then I can maybe have Edge, Edge jump in with a little bit more detail on it. Uh, but the, the way we frame it is at Starbacker, we're building the platform of digital of choice for digital content creators with instant payments, low friction and free of moral censorship. So essentially we're using the Bitcoin Lightning Network to unlock value for value monetization and empower digital content creators to take control over their storyline. So at the end of the day, um, we feel that there is a huge gap um, in the ability for content creators globally to monetize their content effectively. If you are a super famous Rihanna type personality, sure, you can, you can monetize your content pretty effortlessly for high value, uh, but there really is no, uh, isn't much of a middle class of content creators and that, that there is. Um, suffers from extremely high uh, platform fees, transmission fees of their funds to and from the account, and just all kinds of gimmies and gotchas that go along with that. And so we're aiming to, Bitcoin fixes this, we feel. So we're aiming to uh, kind of clear that, clear all of that legacy plumbing out and make a really simple, seamless way for people to create value, reward value, and, um, and, and, and share their creativity. Ed, do you want to kind of take it from there on anything? I think that was uh, the perfect way of saying it. And um, <laughs> I, I, the, the, thing, the thing that really stuck with me with, with Starbuck is like the, the Bitcoin fixes this for the payment, for the payment part. Like um, me personally, I, that, that's a story I'll have to tell. I don't have, a, I don't have a PayPal account anymore because PayPal um, decided to blacklist me because of the, uh, I, I had a blog about like uh, CBD and PayPal decided to blacklist me because of that. And uh, for, for like, since two years, I don't have access to the PayPal network anymore, which is in Germany actually a problem because Apple Pay was like, or Google Pay and Apple Pay were really late with the deployment in Germany. So uh, PayPal was pretty much the only way to do online shopping if you didn't have a, a credit card. Mm -hmm. And being blocked from PayPal really like <laughs> was, was a problem in, in my daily life. And, and, then I, and then I met someone who owns a store which sells only legal goods but is not able to take credit card payments because there's no bank that wants to work with them. And then I found out about Bitcoin and met these <laughs> two, amazing, two amazing guys. And, and we started working on Starbaker and this is, um, yeah, it, it is. It is absolutely empowering for for the content creators that that create content that is not like the the um, the average content. Like it is the perfect platform for these people too. But but it's it the, the, it, it gets most powerful for people that has been that have been discriminated by the financial system that or the legacy financial system of the last few decades. And um, yeah, that's. Um, that's the thing I'm most passionate about with Starbucks. Okay, very cool. So um, let's talk about the deplatforming and all that uh, next. But let's talk about what a content creator is, or uh, kind of the target market here, right? It's it's the uh, it's the elephant in the room uh, with Starbacker, and that is the not safe for work sort of adult aspect of it, right? Um, which might possibly tie into the question of why did you start this company, uh, which I wanted to ask. I know Joe has a, a story about why he started this company. 
uh, and what has been going on. But um, there's a lot of people who are giving some scrutiny here that this is kind of an OnlyFans for Bitcoin. Um, can you talk a little bit about the creators that you're targeting um, and touch on why you started this company in the first place? Sure. Uh, so let's let me flip those around if I can, Mike, and we'll kind of start with the origin story and kind of how it's evolved from there. Um, and I think that uh, my so my wife is a small business owner and as you know, always figuring out the payments piece has always been a challenge for her. She's an artist, so she sells her art online and, uh, you know, I've kind of been adjacent to this this space for a while. Um, and then I, I think last fall, um, as I was pretty deep, uh, I guess it was last late last summer, I was kind of pretty deep down the rabbit hole, uh, you know, kind of on the telegram groups with all the lightning node operators, etc. And the news came out that, uh, you know, OnlyFans was or MasterCard was going to suspend its service to OnlyFans um, because it had been lobbied by a lobbyist group to do so essentially is kind of the background and kind of what came out of that. Um, and they appeared to capitulate to that um, and kind of sending the Internet into a brief uproar until they until they kind of reneged two, two weeks later and after a lot of broken trust, kept the payments on the site. And it's um, was really an example of how you're, especially in the middle of a pandemic, you're talking about, um, in that instance, you know, a group of potentially economic disadvantaged individuals that are trying to earn in an environment that is extremely difficult to as, as society, because we're all, everything's closed down, you know, job opportunities are crazy. And so how were they, and, and then they're having these kind of almost non-state actors like the Visa network or the MasterCard network kind of dictate whether or not they can receive funds. Um, you know, the activities they were doing weren't illegal and, you know, the platform they're on is a legal business. Um, and so just seeing the kind of unfairness there for people to be able to just earn value for the value that they're providing was really frustrating. And I think um, that was kind of the genesis seed, and we kind of started talking about it. And it's as you talk like that, that problem extends outward to a lot of different people today. That I think, um, even if you're talking, you know, you're starting to see a little bit of TradFi trying to address this. But there's, you know, even if you're if you're a traditional Instagram influencer with a hundred thousand, you know, followers, you have to be very careful not to get kicked off of Instagram by monetizing your your content incorrectly on on instagram etc and so really kind of trying to fix that content monetization piece for uh, you know for people with online followings or for people that are creating for online audiences kind of became the the broader mission and i think um you know we set out to design one a a platform that's you know kind of safe for work friendly everywhere but as well as that allows um you know explicit content at, at, as it's you know at legal and that we've kind of been wrestling with that because there is some tension there, right? As far as creating apps in the business, et cetera, we have, uh, you know, we've implemented um, some clear toggles on the site where people are automatically, you know, opted on to, you know, the, the explicit platform or the non-explicit platform, depending on how they enter Starbacker. Um, they, they have full power over changing that, but you're, that whole idea being you're not going to be served content if that's not the kind of content you're, you're interested in. Um, but we want to push that control to the user while at the same time allowing the creators to have that opportunity to, to create on the site. Um, and so that, that kind of led us to, to go to kind of start mocking it up, putting it together, solving some of the payment routing technology that we've built that Arun has built with, you know, how to, <laughs> how to commission payments to creators and, and, and pay them instantly. Cause that was the, as you dug into the other, um, you know, the other piece of this is, many online content creators of all stripes have to wait. I, I think the average payout time for a YouTube creator is 45 days, 50 days, something like that. And YouTube takes like half 45 to 55% of the earnings. Like it's totally nuts. And we wanted to make it as transparent and as easy as possible for you to receive value as soon as you earn it. Right. Like someone tips, tips your photo or subscribes to your, you, you know, your newsletter or listens to your, um, you know, listens to your new song on Starbacker and they, they make a payment to you or a tip, 
you receive that instantly in your wallet. And so that was another kind of core, those kind of two kind of formed the pillars of kind of what we built, uh, you know, what Starbacker is today. Okay, and just to clarify, um, it says here in the deck, uh, Arun is a 2017 Lightning, uh, has been in the Lightning community since 2017, right? Okay, uh, just wanted to clarify that uh, he is uh, leading yeah. the technical team here. Yeah. Um, okay, so real quick, you know, some people were talking about, um, you know, how you have a risk with AWS, right, uh, getting turned off. Um, just to be clear, uh, Starbacker is offering a platform in the same way that these other um these other alternatives are offering platforms and, you know, not uh, demonetizing and deplatforming people, right? You're not building some sort of uh, decentralized uh, way. But um, if there was a problem in the future with AWS, have you put any time into thinking about how you may handle that if that was to ever happen? Yeah, absolutely, uh, uh, you know, Mike. So. Um, right now, our policy uh, mirrors, you know, what AWS allows uh, it to host. So uh, we are good, but that doesn't mean that in future they change their policy and then, you know, try to push it out. Um, it, 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 there are a couple of things that we can uh, we, are, we are looking to do is, um, you know, one is on the content side, um, you know, trying to, uh, you know, make the content uh, available. Uh, outside of uh, of uh, it, not just AWS or any cloud platform, so that uh, the content is always available and, and can be rendered. Uh, and then also, um, uh, you know, uh, trying to move the servers, uh, you know, off of uh, you know, the cloud, uh, but keep it running in in a in a in a way so that uh, the platform continues continue to run. So we we have that on our roadmap, and we will. Uh, uh, we will get there uh, uh, in, 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 as part of the road. Yes, but it's not like this is an ungoverned and fully permissionless decentralized platform. I, I think something to add into here too, Muzz, is like we are all like maniac lightning enthusiasts and are super excited to incorporate all kinds of new lightning features and functionality as it's being developed across the ecosystem. So for example, if someone designed a way to essentially plug in your, um, I think some of the newer like home node setups are doing this where you can run your own home server with your own content on it. Like we not only would be open, like we would be actively seeking out to work with kind of partnering with those groups in the Lightning ecosystem to enable that functionality into Starbacker. So you could be like, okay, I wanna host my content on my node and Starbacker is just the billboard that I'm using and I'm receiving the payments instantly, you've reduced your sovereign risk pretty significantly at that point. And then, and so like that, that's an example of the kind of opportunities we look for in strategic partnerships. Like hosting on your own Start9 or your mm -hmm. own um, mm -hmm. Umbral, Umbral device. Bingo. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so I think that's good for the AWS. So the Starbacker founding tenants here, uh, creating, uh, treating creators fairly and appropriately, paying them for the content and value that they deserve, and ensuring a safe place for creators to monetize and publish their content, right, without banking risks and deplatform risks. So um, Sadly, the state of the way it is, uh, because you're a real business, is you have to have uh, the ultimate say because uh, like restrictions on advertising drugs, um, you know, it, all sorts of not safe for work things that are really not safe for work and illegal, right? Um, you will be able uh, to remove illegal content from the platform. Yes, absolutely. And we, 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 I mean, we're a incorporated in the state of Delaware. We're a United States company. We're going to, we have to, and will, um, you know, comply with all of the, you know, state laws and, and national laws and regulations we need to. Um, but, you know, our, when we say, you know, we're against moral censorship is we're not trying to, like, that's kind of a bright line for us. Like, if there's clear case law that this type of content is illegal, then we're going to 
you know, going to suspend it. And, and, and that's, I think, the, the only thing we can do as responsible fiduciaries and, you know, stewards of capital for the business. I mean, that's the regulatory environment we're in today. And, and uh, that's what, you know, that's, I think, going to be part of where it has to be to be successful. Now, I do want to mention, Muzz, that a lot of that, like, safety language is also around the risk creators have in trying to transact, right? Where they're like, often have to pay very expensive and ursurous fees and, and transaction costs, et cetera. Um, we wanna kind of make a safer business environment for them as well to operate. So it's kind of goes, goes both ways there. We wanna make sure we're delivering, you know, safe and appropriate content. And we also, and we also wanna make sure that we're creating a safe environment for the, for the creators to operate in where they know they can, you know, make rent if they're, if they're, you know, if they're generating that off of Starback or they're going to receive the payments they need. Right. Okay. So that's pretty clear then. Ensuring a safe place. Um, and uh, say if somebody had a particular political view, uh, but it was not illegal content, you would, they would not be subject to a lot of the uh, censorship on other platforms. Yeah. This is yeah. one of, I mean, the, I, one I of the things that's... you're solving for. Yeah. I think that we're, we're, I know that we're very strongly aligned as, an, as a, a founding team that it takes all views to kind of make the world. And if they're, you know, if you're not creating an illegal content and you're expressing your political views, well, then, you know, I think it's pretty important that we have platforms to allow you to do so. Um, that's, Edge, I don't know if you want to add anything to that with a European perspective. For example, we have, we have one uh, like cannabis photographer on the platform. Uh, and I, I know for a fact because I, I used to work or used to 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 do something uh, do some some blogging in that area that like there is no social network where you can where you can easily like uh, advertise or post like like artsy photography of cannabis so that's like we are building the 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 place for for all that kind of stuff. All right, very cool. Okay, so let's uh, talk about some exciting traction, all right? Because this is a new uh, company in the germination stages, right? Uh, when did you begin to build this uh, or when did you go live and where are you at right now? I'm going to give some high-level bullets and then pass it to Arun and Edge here to kind of fill in a couple of blanks because I because there's been so much happening and, and we have so much to share on so many levels here. But uh I'd say we started kind of, we went under the hood, went stealth, like started assembling everything um, in, uh, I think it was about late, mid to late August of this year. And uh, with the goal being, you know, we kind of had our eye on adopting BTC. We wanted to go there and just see the exciting things going on in El Salvador, network in with the Lightning community, et cetera. We wanted to launch, you know, around, you know, right before we went down for adopting BTC. Um, Trials and tribulations, et cetera. We pushed hard, uh, lots of ups and downs in that period, but we we got the platform live the week before uh, adopting BTC started, which was our first week in November. So we're about 10 weeks in fully live and we've had um, over 7,000 visits to the site. Over 1,100 of those visitors have signed up to the site, which is fantastic traction. And we've had um, over three thousand dollars of platform revenue, we call it, where there's been three thousand. That that's the top line amount of transactions that have happened on the platform so far, um, and we're you know so we're continuing to see that kind of go up and to the right pretty aggressively. So um, interesting echo effects every time we bring in you know a new content creator and they're bringing in their followers and fans. Um, you just see these waves of of growth on the platform. So. We're very excited with the growth we've had. Uh, it is just the beginning. We have a lot planned for the future. But uh, Arun, do you do you have anything you want to you want to chip in on on kind of that build and launch phase there? Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, definitely the uh, the initial launch um, was uh, one thing that we wanted to get it right uh, is uh, this whole payment uh, through Lightning uh, that it has to work. In, in as easy as like, you know, just, you know, point the QR code and, and get it to work. And I think we got that right, um, you know, from day one that uh, we didn't have any uh, any payment failures or any issues other than like, you know, uh, if people trying to use their own node with one channel. 
so that that definitely helped us, uh, you know, you know, having the the transaction flow through. Uh, and then also, you know, uh, we had this auto payout uh, to the creators uh, uh, so that you know they don't have to deal with uh, moving into their wallet. So that has been working really well. Uh, and then uh, the other uh, thing to mention is uh, in terms of, uh, you know, one of the reasons why we wanted to be focused on El Salvador is, um, is you know, uh, in making, you know, they're making, you know, uh, having Bitcoin as legal tender and having the Chivo wallet with everyone. Uh, there is a, a, a general uh, awareness for people. And then, and these are the people who have who already missed out on this whole banking credit card uh, uh, you know, side. So uh, now, you know, you know, the, uh, you know, they are also creative people. You know, they also want to make money, but they didn't have that means. But then now, uh, you know, with this, uh, they are able to, uh, you know, take, uh, you know, put their photos in and and you know, you know, make make the li uh, living out some get some you know, dollars out of it. I think that um, you know definitely, uh, uh, you know, help them help us to kind of like you know, you know, push this through. With the uh, with the user growth, you want to comment so, on some of the marketing traction you've seen so far? Because I know you've been leading a lot of the efforts there. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, like from 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 the development focus that Arun just said, we started out with with making the um, with making sure the payment works. What was really uh, interesting from a marketing perspective as well, because uh, we noticed users. Um, wanted more support for more wallets and that it wasn't easy at the beginning to, um, to identify wallets that are actually like that that offer some some kind of support for us to to um to get invoices from them without without the user put entering and and uh, bold 11 invoice every time they want to receive a payment because we wanted to push the payments we didn't want to like um hold the funds uh, on our side not paying out the creators if they want to so uh, that's when we started uh, looking for wallets that that do this, and um, so ZBD, for example, is is a wallet that that provides an, an uh, endpoint for for others to to actually get these invoices. And um, every time we we added a new wallet to to Starbucks, and people um, started reaching out to us saying that it, that it worked amazingly, that they really appreciated us like integrating the wallet. We talked to the guys from from ZBD as well, like. Um, and then we implemented lightning address and and this is where we where we uh, identified from a marketing perspective that um that we don't have like the two pillars we identified before which were um like marketing to uh, safe for work creators and marketing to non-safe for work creators but that we have a, like a third target audience that are actually like the the bitcoiners or the bitcoiners like the 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 hardcore Bitcoiners that that want to use this platform as non-custodial as possible, and um, yeah, I, I like we 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 invite El Salvador as a as an entry point for the for the whole idea. But in the end, like I think all of us were really were really uh, excited or, or um, stunned about that that the, the the most traffic we have right now is coming from Germany from from someone who who had had an active follower. Uh, had an active uh, followership that is actually consisting mostly uh, out of no coiners or pre coiners. Um, yeah, well, she so it's a great example there, Ed. She uh, she basically yes. from a from an adoption perspective, she was able to uh, she had one or two kind of uh, Bitcoin savvy people in her audience, and they were writing guides to onboard people, and she's now generating um, several hundred dollars a month through our platform on Lightning. You know, no KY, you know, there's lightning getting, she's probably caused, we probably had two or 250 people sign up for learn about Bitcoin, get their first wallet, get their first coins. Um, you know, that adoption on ramp story is something that we probably haven't talked about enough, Muzz, but is like a kind of a, something else, something that we're very passionate about and think we need things on lightning network that make it easier for us to get the next billion users and we think Starbacker is one of those things all right so that's grassroots zero marketing spend okay you have some activity on the platform let's call it 1300 ish registered users okay 
Um, you teased it a little bit with the uh, Zebedee integration, but um, so right now you have the Bitcoin Beach, you have Strike, Bitcoin Beach Wallet, and Zebedee. Is that correct? Yes. And, and Lightning Address. And Lightning Address. So and your and LN Markets address. address works, your Stacker News address works, your any of your other like, LN bot. wallets, your LN Tech Spot works, all of those work. But Arun, why don't you kind of Talk about the next evolution of our wallet strategy a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So the uh, you know this was definitely um, uh, in our uh, development roadmap to have our own uh, wallet where uh, the um, the users can um, push in money and then use that um, to spend and then also have the creators uh, you know get the uh, get the sats um, and then you know they will be able to pull it out or even, you know, spend it on the platform. Uh, this also uh, helps us, um, you know, push the adoption by bringing in new users as um, uh, as Joe mentioned, like someone, you know, completely new coming in, opening up a wallet, you know, they will be able to get some stats, start some stats, uh, and then, you know, that triggers them to uh, to bring in more, more uh, users. So um, the wallet, having a wallet built in as part of, part of the platform, uh, is going to be the key for our uh, ne next growth phase. And we are already there, like the, uh, on the development uh, uh, of it is, is almost done and we are kind of like into the testing phase. And once we have that done, uh, we will we will deploy it and it will also be part of the, the mobile app uh, uh, when we release it. So let me paint you a picture for that, Muzz, on what that's going to look like. You'll be able to um, either click the Starbacker app on your phone or go to the Starbacker website, sign up with only your email address and we'll have instant access to a lightning enabled wallet that you can then, that you will have, you know, some amount of sats airdrop to you, depending on what we're, uh, you know, how, how our promotions are going to work, but you know, an, an earned sequence on the site that teaches you how to use it, rewarding you in Satoshi's each time you do that, or for, you know, returning to the site, liking your friend's content, et cetera. Um, and the it is from there you can spend that on any light any any lightning terminal it's just like a regular lightning wallet so it with anyone else that accepts lightning you now have a wallet on your phone that you can send and receive with you have access to the app you can sit almost instagram like take your pictures post it you know you'll be able to import your profile cross post across all of your socials boom you know tip me on starbacker and you know, kind of have build that whole payment ecosystem up around micro transactions in the in kind of the social sphere. So we're very excited about what that's going to look like as we as we build that out this year. And that's kind of the big that's kind of the big hairy goal for this raise is to is to get us to that seamless experience. It's just going to let us hopefully create several viral moments to to just really escalate our our membership and activity. All right, I love that. Um, I hope people haven't fallen asleep and somebody heard that, uh, but that's that's going to be great. Okay, I wanted to talk about the um, the import functionality. Maybe we can get to that in a little bit. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and chat about the referral program. Okay, so this is new. I think it just went live not, not too long ago. Um, how do the rewards work? Okay, um, and then those rewards will then be placed in right now, uh, what will be the Starbacker custodial wallet uh, in the platform. Is that how that works? Yes, Muzz, that's how, that's uh, basically dead on there. So the way the, the referral fee we're offering is we want people to um, be incentivized to bring over both their fans as well as other creators to join the platform, right? The best way we could um, we determined to do that was every user that signs up on Starbacker in your in your profile you have a referral link um, everyone that signs up for Starbacker through your referral link you will receive five percent of all of their transaction values for their first 30 days sending or receiving so for example if I referred you Muzz and you signed up and you had five subscribers that then you know paid you $25 for your for your latest 
um, musings on the uh, syndicate market for Lightning. And then, so Starbacker would take their $2.50 of each of those, and we would give half of that back to Joe, the 5% back to Joe. So you, that lasts for 30 days for everybody you sign up. And is for since people on, on Starbacker are both consuming content as well as creating it, it goes both directions. And we thought that was an important piece to include in there. Um, today, those rewards go to your connected wallet. Um, as we in, as we launch the integrated custodial wallet, yes, the war, rewards will drop directly into your custodial wallet on the site. Okay, so let's talk about the import functionality, right? And how you get these. You get to you get a creator, uh, you get an influencer, you get somebody with a hundred thousand uh, followers on Instagram. Uh, maybe they're aware of the referral uh, promotion. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're looking to further monetize or be on another platform. Okay, when they post to their um, to their following, everyone has to manually sign up, right? But the importing of profiles and the one push uh, posting site, like across the different platforms, how does that work? I know I just threw a lot at you, but so I'm gonna let the uh, I'm gonna let Arun take this one on the on the little bit of the tech background, Muzz. Um, conceptually, we kind of want it to be almost the business hub for the creators, right? Where you can manage your whole creative empire there, and you can push, you know, push to all your different sites, and then you can, you know, always be funneling payments back through your, um, you know, your Starbacker account, but. Arun, do you, let's, why don't you dig in a little bit on like kind of what that's going to look like and how that's going to work? Oh, sure, yeah. So um, when we initially started, um, we, we targeted like, you know, a few of the, uh, um, uh, the platforms where uh, if, the, if the creator already had um, like 100 plus photos, videos that they want to bring in, um, we kind of like built like a bridge uh, to, 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 to get those content uh, into Starbacker. Uh, into their profile, so that then they can kind of like you know you know you know use that. So that's the first step. And as Joe mentioned, uh, in our roadmap, you know we kind of get to a point where um, you know uh, Starbacker kind of becomes like the 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 center piece of it, where they can uh, either push or pull the content from different platforms. And and as you know, some of the platforms don't allow. Uh, to kind of like you know off or, or download the, uh, uh, the the content, so we will have to work with those restrictions. But um, we would want to get to a point where uh, it's as easy as for the creator to uh, to pull the content and, and put it on Starbacker or or take the content and then push it up to to other platforms. Okay. So let's talk about bit refill and uh, potential pay with moon integration. Um, what what does that look like? Yeah, so the the bit refill is already uh, uh, available today and it's working. Uh, meaning, yeah, bit refill supports Lightning address and we support Lightning address payout. So um, all I have to do is create a bit refill uh, account. I get the bit refill Lightning address. Put that on to start backer and boom done. Like so, I don't even have to have any wallet. The the payout goes there, and then I can then choose like a gift card or like you know any other payout. The um, uh, hold up. One thing on a rune on bit re yeah. refill before we get to the before we get to pay with moon. Oh, um, pay with kind moon. Of the, yeah. the second step of that is we develop as we develop after through the raise. Muzz is zero. You know, we want to seek probably a deeper integration there where you can actually support a creator with an Amazon gift card and boom, it would flow right through and send an Amazon gift card to their from bit refill to their Starbacker registered account address, right? So like, there's a lot of cool things we can do there as we um, could run a contest for your followers where you're giving a bit refill away and basically just send the payment into, you know, to, to do that. So we're working on a lot of those behind the scenes, but yes, today, um, you know, kind of the big view is we want to provide as many as possible on ramp and off ramps to the, uh, you know, kind of to the to the platform. And sorry to interrupt, the room. Go ahead with the, yeah, uh, yeah. So the, the the pay with moon is um, is for the on ramp where uh, 
if if someone hey i want to you know support this creator but i don't have any uh, i'm a no coiner uh, we can send them um, to 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 moon to kind of like you know pay with their credit card get the sats bring it onto the platform onto our wallet and then and then uh, uh, spend on it and you know it has to be as easy as i just click a button you know you know put my card you know get that done and then you know start using it okay and uh and i correct myself i said pay with moon but i meant moon pay ah, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah so as far as um bolt 12 all right, this is it. Last one. I won't bother you with any more. Just a couple of questions about. Uh, oh yeah. I close this yeah. up. So bolt, bolt twelve. How does that change things? I know that on some of your twenty twenty two goals, you know, yeah. streaming Sats via chat, um, yeah. messaging. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about yeah, some of these? Absolutely. Um, so uh, you know, uh, bolt twelve has this offers mechanism where we can do. Uh, subscription or you know continuous uh, you know pulling the sats from their wallets uh, it's uh, definitely going to help us in in several uh, places uh, starting with the subscription so today uh, uh, you know many of our creators have monthly subscriptions say I'm, i i subscribe to a creator uh, i want to be uh, you know seeing their content every month so once the 30 days is up um, then we would you know, directly, you know, uh, uh, you know, use the Bolt 12 as an invoice to pull it from their wallet. Um, it will also be easier uh, if they have money in, a, in, in within Starbacker in their own wallet. So that's that's one. And then the second one is the the streaming, the live streaming that we want to enable um, uh, to have like a, a one minute, uh, you know, you know, you know, pay a streaming pay where uh, hey, I want to kind of like you know you know, join this this live streaming. If I like it, I will continue. And as I watch through, um, you know, the, the, the sats will get streamed, you know, through that, um, uh, you know, you know, through, through, you know, watching of that video uh, or like a podcast or any, uh, any type of, uh, you know, you know, streaming even. Uh, those two uh, are the key areas that will help with Bolt 12. Uh, Edge, I know, I know you are kind of thinking of other things as well. Uh, uh, you want to talk about it? Yeah, sure. I think um, Bolt 12 will will definitely change the way Lightning works completely. And um, I've been I've been uh, experimenting with it using uh, Blockstream C Lightning for quite some time now, and it's really it is amazing. the 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 initial problem I talked about earlier, where we where we thought about a way where we uh, how we could push sets on lightning to a creator's wallet and uh, because this this is definitely something that will get solved by bolt 12 because right now what we do is every time a creator um, receives a payment we have to um, request an invoice from them so uh, what we do with lightning address which is basically ln url is um, that that starbacker sends a request to a web server that is connected to a node and then the web server gets the invoice from the node sends it to us we pay it with Bolt 12, all of that will be gone. So Bolt 12 will introduce an address format that does this integrated in Lightning. So um, everything will be much easier. There will be addresses, Lightning, like they will look like invoices, but they actually like static. So you can reuse them anytime. So a creator can come to our platform if they don't want to use the custodial wallet, they could provide a Bolt 12 invoice, like a static um, Bolt 12 invoice from any Bolt 12 support wallet, and we will and we will be able to push sets to that to that wallet whenever we like without actually having this whole this whole LN URL setup. So the the list of supported wallet wallets will explode as soon as LND and C Lightning and Eclair will implement Bolt 12. And there's there's so much um, improvements in Bolt 12 from a from a user perspective that users probably that most users probably won't notice, like like privacy, for example. And um, it, it enables us to work with different currencies in a native way inside Lightning Network. So um, this is this is a huge opportunity for, for the whole payment rail we have built right now. So as soon as Bolt 12, which is which is like, as I said, I've been using it for quite some time in the in the very early beta phase or alpha phase that C Lightning has implemented currently. Um, 
but as far as I know, Ellen, like Lightning, Lightning Labs is already working on implementing it. They they didn't want to <laughs> for quite some time, but I started working on it. And as soon as it gets um, actually like implemented into the bolts, into the Lightning spec, and every implementer has it in, in inside of its implement uh, inside of the implementation, things will get really really wild. So. Let's move on and let's wrap this up soon. Let's talk about the race. We don't need to go into the valuation, but it's very modest in my opinion. Uh, very modest with a discount. Um, extremely reasonable uh, in the world that we're living in right now. Um, so let's talk about what you're going to use some of these first funds for. Let's also talk about um, your current burn, uh, which you guys are very capital efficient and uh, nobody's really taking any salaries, right? So everything is pretty minimal, uh, but let's do that. Let's talk about use of funds and the current burn. Sure. <laughs> um, so kind of speak to this in a couple different, uh, kind of, we've kind of basically got our spend into kind of three different buckets, so to speak with the business. So to, to date, um, you know, those buckets are essentially development resources, uh marketing resources and then uh what i would call community management resources where we want to make sure that we are uh providing a really great experience we want to invest into that both for the creators and for the users of the site uh today as it exists our uh, monthly burn is relatively low we've done that by um kind of leveraging some uh, you know, El Salvadorian development resources, as well as Arun's magical skills, and, uh, you know, have kind of gotten to this point so far um, there. Uh, but, you know, obviously, we'd love to be able to kind of take those next steps and do the, uh, the, so for the dev side, the funding dedicated there is, is basically for re-architecting the site to enable the, you know, the mobile app launch and this full, you know, custodial wallet vision we've been discussing today, as well as, you know, continuous UX improvement, et cetera, basically make it better. Um, and then the, the, so the, and that, and that provides for a full stack developer, you know, some other, some other kind of development resources, some UX resources there. Uh, the uh, customer slash account management setup is uh, we want to invest a little bit more into there, especially as our uh, user and creator profile is, is growing more international by the day. Um, we want to be able to make sure we're supporting, especially our strongest creators, uh, the creators, you know, kind of bring the most activity to the network with anything we can to help make them successful. Um, you know, we think that is, if you have, if your primary customer has a higher NPS if, with NPS with you than with their competitors, you typically win long-term, all other things being equal. And um, we think there's a massive, uh, you know, opportunity in the space because a lot, arguably, a lot of the other platforms focus not at all or in a negative way on their uh, on the on the satisfaction of their of their creators. Um, and thirdly, the uh, marketing spend um, is going to be, uh, you know, the bulk of it. I would say is going to be on to building out our wallet ecosystem where we're you know, providing small little airdrops for completing tasks on site to gamify it, um, you know, kind of helping uh, whether we need to do integrations with MoonPay, you know, expanding that bit refill integration, like how can we, uh, you know, increase marketing both internally and then probably a little bit of like external marketing as far as, um, you know, kind of establishing a presence in the creator economy industry a little bit, uh, reaching out to, um, you know, we want to progressively work our way kind of up that creator slash influencer ladder as the site continues to grow and, and bring on some of those personalities and and kind of put the begin kind of putting the brand out there in the world a little bit. Um, those activities we are very thoughtful about because sometimes they can be um, not the most efficient use of capital. And so I think we kind of tend to um, re relying on tried and true marketing methods where like refer the referral program is one we want to invest very heavily in because we think that that um you know being able to provide those really provides a, a network effect on your on your marketing efforts um so that's kind of a high level view today uh we've been bootstrapping it out of our pockets uh with a you know very lean burn um 
And, you know, I think we, we all have a huge passion for this project and want it to be successful and, and want it to scale. But, you know, that's, uh, we've kind of reached the limit of our, of our personal capital to be able to do that at this point, at least to take it to where we think it can go. Airdropping SATs is probably the, the best marketing dollars you can spend. And right now you're burning, call it four to $5,000 a month in that area. Yeah. Okay. Question. Wonderful. As far as um, income and revenue goes, uh, let's talk about advertising because I know that I was on the app this morning, kind of looking through a lot of the creators and, you know, every once in a while there was a, a star backer post that was maybe something about a gift card. It was, it looked like an ad, but it wasn't an ad. It was from you guys. Have you thought about adding uh, advertising partners or maybe like active creators who are looking to build a following, maybe turning them into kind of paid accounts where for X amount of dollars a month, they're, kind of they're promoted a promoted account have you thought about that certainly i mean there's this, um, <laughs> that's, that's obviously like it comes up immediately when you start kind of talking out these kinds of platforms um we i think there's a whole range of services we could potentially offer to creators um where you could you know pay a little bit more to be uh, featured in a certain category or you could show up in the timeline streams as a promoted post potentially could partner with other outside, you know, advertising to come in there from for as an additional revenue stream. Um, we think that kind of thing gets very powerful when um, you kind of weave it in with the custodial wallet, right? So there could technically be a world where say, um, I've got I've got an account on the site, um, where I show off cooking photos, right? We'll say, you know, every I really want to show off my new recipe. So I will actually pay you 10 sats to look at my recipe, right? Or to look at my uh, you know, look at my content, my latest announcement, or watch my latest 10 second video. Um, there's some really, and that's never really been done in advertising before. And, and I think that that's, um, all of those are very interesting and have a lot of potential for us. Um, I think those come behind, for us come behind getting the app launched and getting the, um, you know, kind of getting the core functionality launched. Um, our core unit economics we're very excited about and i think we'll see some very strong traction there and so there's also um i think generally we're not we don't want to use c over advertising getting pretty heavy on a lot of sites and so i don't know edge if you want to jump in on this or arun and kind of give a couple additional thoughts but um certainly high level kind of what where we've gotten so far on those sure um yeah, I think that's that's um, that's definitely way of going going at it. There's definitely ways of definitely way less innovative ways of going at it, like having basically just sponsored posts, like um, like the ones the ones you saw, are, are, as you said, are posts we we made. So as soon as you sign up with the platform, you get automatically subscribed to the Starbucks support account, which pushes. Um, like news posts about creators or platform features and stuff like that but something similar is definitely imaginable for for um for ads as well or people that want to promote their content like you can you can uh, you could um, have sponsored posts that show up like every 10th post in your feed is something you have actually not subscribed to but something that is sponsored right now so there's there's a lot of opportunities for for advertisement on the platform there's um also, the possibility to to uh, work together with with uh, with other uh, platforms like Bitrefill, for example, to have a closer relationship there and uh, advertise like um, advertise their product by weaving it in even more into our ecosystem um, and and uh, earning from that. So there's there are tons of ways we can we can weave that into um, into the platform. Um, and there's there's a lot of other affiliate revenue. Uh, there too. I know we're talking about Moon Pay, right? So people can actually just purchase Sats on the platform, but Pay with Moon uh, would be a way for people to withdraw out of the mm -hmm. custodial wallet to then a Visa gift card for actual spending, right? So it's another off ramp for people, oh. and uh, I'm sure there's a there's a referral program there too. Um, okay, so real quick, we didn't talk about the revenue model, uh, but since we're talking about clams and cheese, 
Uh, so Starbacker takes it flat 10% of all sats that um, are per spent, right? Correct. It's a per transaction fee um, that compares to 20 to 45% of what you see kind of web two content platforms charging today. So we're way, um, way lower than that. Um, we don't take any kind of payment processing fees. You just pay whatever the lightning network assigns you when you want to transfer, uh, you know, whatever the lightning network protocol delivers, which is usually virtually zero, maybe a sat or two, um, when you're, when you're making a payment. Um, and we do see, um, kind of this value for value, the streaming sats, we may have slightly different revenue shares built into those later as we build out, you know, new products. So we view that as kind of that 10% fee is kind of the base platform, right? Where you'll always be able to come on, sign up, post, comment, like, subscribe, tip, et cetera, do, you know, kind of interact in the platform. But if you kind of want to be more of a power creator or you have, you know, more needs, we want to, there will be options to kind of, oh, well, I want to enable messaging, or I want to enable people to pay for comments and have those comments be featured comments on my posts, right? And those, you know, we may have a slightly different revenue split with those depending on what makes sense. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where we are today and we're, that's in place and, and working on the site now. So, so, um, I know that the app is definitely priority, but adding a promote this post or become a paid, uh, creator and more su suggested, uh, for other people is, uh, not a novel idea. All right. Very cool. Not sure if this was said before, but just to clarify it, 100%. The app will be 100% safe for work. True or false? That is a true okay. statement, Muzzman. Okay, if there's anyone <laughs> still listening at this point, I'm not sure if they're all bored. Um, but yes, the app is 100% safe for work. Okay. Sure. All right. Um, I think that's it, guys. I don't know if you want to pass it around one time and do uh, a quick little closing statement, but I think that's... Um, Pretty much uh, all my questions and a really good overview of the platform. Excited to work together with you and the and the rest of the syndicate and the rest of our, you know, of our investors as we fill out, fill out the round. So um, appreciate it and looking forward to seeing what's next. I think 2022 is going to be a very exciting year for Starbacker. Awesome. And uh, they are talking to plenty of other investors. So we'll have to see um, how that happens. All right. That's it. That's our syndicate deal um ltng.ventures um and i look forward to uh getting this up and getting this filled so thanks guys thanks mike really appreciate it thank you so much bye